Patrick. Hi. Thank you for meeting me next to this road in Warsaw. Thank you too. <laughs> Something is happening in Poland. You guys have lost 10,855 Jehovah's Witnesses in a 10 year period, which mm -hmm. is unprecedented anywhere in the world. Why? Yes, this decreasing is significant uh, past few years. Uh, I also noticed uh, lower activity of those who are in the congregation, but stay there because they are very close with their family. But I think this uh, narrow-minded uh, mindset uh, promoted by governing body for many years is now the myth. This wall is now broken. People don't want to be limited with the information. They want to take a look what's going on outside of this wall, and they do so. But we have the same narrow-minded mindset in every country, the same policies, the same rules. What's different about Poland? Uh, I think we should take into account also wider context of uh, our society. Uh, all things uh, people in Poland experienced past few centuries. As you mentioned uh, during the meeting uh, yesterday, people in Poland don't like bullshit. And uh, the manifestation of this uh, attitude we saw in the history against the uh, German nation, uh, Russian nation, and now as people with this same mindset uh, were under influence of American doctrine, the same mindset, I think, made them ready to do that move, to discover what is behind the curtain. Okay. How has the cruelty of the governing body and the Jehovah's Witness religion impacted you personally and how did you get involved? Mm -hmm. uh, I experienced kind of uh, shunning and uh, changing uh, approach of those uh, whom I was in the congregation before. Uh, even if I only started to leave meetings approximately two years ago, I treated uh, that I'm, I felt that, that I'm treated, uh, I'm, I'm shunned uh, because I'm not active anymore uh, in an enormous degree I was before. And uh, after the public announcement that I'm no longer Jehovah's Witness, I experienced the decreasing of uh, connections of friends. Mm. So I lost some friends, uh, artificial friends on Facebook. But uh, also the one day after this public announcement in the congregation, I've got received a text message. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, I heard you are no longer with us, but still I'm expecting you will be. Yes, and uh, in this short, uh, History, that's it. Were you raised as a Jehovah's Witness? Yes, I was okay. raised as a Jehovah's Witness. When I was uh, three years old, my mother was baptized. Uh, she uh, divorced with my father, so I, um, I was very close to that doctrine from the very childhood, and that was uh, entire my life for approximately 23 years. 23 years, yes. and what was it that, what was the reason why you left? Uh, the knowledge. The knowledge is the power. I started to get this knowledge approximately nine, ten years ago, but uh, I, I had some pause in uh, getting those information. And finally, after the Royal Commission, which I was... Uh, I heard about that. I haven't found it on uh, YouTube by myself. I was uh, informed about that uh, by uh, another Jehovah's Witness. I started to watch these uh, videos and uh, then after a few years of pause I started to get more and more information. Uh, I created the account on the public forum of ex-witnesses and also current witnesses and that this resource of knowledge showed me that there is plenty of people with similar history like mine and finally three years of uh, breaking this wall, I'm free. Would you say that the, the knowledge that you refer to about the Australian Royal Commission, was that an integral part of your awakening? Yes, yes.
Indeed. And what did it feel like when you were first uh, watching the videos and reviewing the information? How did it feel as a Jehovah's Witness? I was, uh, I would say, kind of ashamed of what are they talking, how do they acting before the court. I noticed clear hypocrisy, two standards, something other told in printed publications for the society of new world <laughs> and something different before the official governments. Can you think of a specific example? You mentioned hypocrisy mm -hmm. in the Australian Royal Commission. Can you think of a specific example where there was clear hypocrisy? Uh, the word of uh, Jackson, who said that it would be ignorant from our part saying that we are the only one group by which God uh, speaks to people. Once uh, from the Watchtower awake, all publications and all uh, public talks, uh, we know something different. And this announcement uh, in the Watchtower from January 2016, when they clearly stated uh, we can make some mistake in our strategical and doctrine uh, explanations and decisions. There's a lot of, um, I notice in Poland, the ex-witnesses are very mobilized in terms of protesting. To what extent do you think they are effective in waking up Jehovah's Witnesses? Do you think it's down to the protesting or more down to the knowledge that you described? I think we see and observe an enormous kind of activity of uh, all um, ex-witnesses who are brave enough to show up with their faces. It's hard to say what will be. Uh, I know and I have some contacts from those who uh, stay in the congregation, who call me, who write messages and emails to me. Those people who stay in the congregation and uh, work like, uh, let's say, in the underground. Uh, the plan of them is to stay as long as they can because they have to. But the work they do is also significant and I think very important to help the others to wake up. So you're talking about whistleblowers who are still inside the organization yes. who are helping activists. Yes. I'm just interested in the whole phenomenon of protesting, particularly outside conventions and kingdom halls. You mentioned the bravery and I agree that it's a very brave thing to do. I'm just interested in whether it's actually waking people up or whether it's purely a case of encouraging people who are forced to be witnesses, who draw courage from seeing these protests. Do you think it's effective? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, I think all those kind of activities, uh, also those targeted to protect the society before mm. this doctrine, uh, these actions and uh, publishing movies recorded during uh, such manifestations and uh, informing about uh, other kind of actions like informing hospitals uh, about uh, blood transfusion and uh, bad influence of the doctrine is very helpful for society. And I do also have an experience from yesterday uh, in the conference center where we met. The lady at the reception desk uh, said that this uh, meeting uh, seems to be very interesting. So I asked, uh, why do you think so? I'm very interested in uh, cults and sects and uh, kind of uh, such groups. Uh, I know two Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm not and I uh, wasn't one of them. But it's very interesting what you are doing. So it shows people uh, appreciate what activators do and uh, need that. I you think feel there is solidarity from Polish people in general as to what's happening in this movement? Yes, that yeah. experiences, that, these experiences show it is like that. And you mentioned that you were particularly upset about the damage that's being caused by the prohibition on blood transfusions. Mm -hmm. Yes. In one message I've got received after publishing a few of my movies on my uh, YouTube channel, uh, 
I received one very sad story um, about an um, elder who uh, suddenly was transported to the hospital. Uh, there was still a chance to save his life by injecting the blood, but he automatically said he won't accept that because he is one of Jehovah's Witnesses. He has full support of his family. Uh, one day after that, when some parameters went worse, still there was a chance to save his life. Mm. Either another hospital offered the help, but they uh, emphasized that it's crucial for this guy to accept the blood. And uh, two or three days after that, uh, when time was uh, going, he finally died. And uh, the author of this story, one of uh, children, said now he is uh, very angry with that. But when he remembers, when he goes back in his mind to those events, that was programmed, that was automatic. There was no human thought about that. He was like programmed, like the robot. Because that was the official statement of the doctrine of governing body. Now he does regret this thing. Part of family still uh, tries, tries to explain for themselves that it must be. It must have been like that. He must die because parameters were very uh, weak and uh, his faith in Almighty Jehovah who uh, could have helped him just like it is presented in the literature of Jehovah's Witnesses that in such critical moments in many cases he rescued those people, those brothers and sisters why it didn't happen here? We had a recent video on that mm -hmm. where Gary Bro said that if someone dies, then uh, you can't compare it with someone who survives declining a blood transfusion because it might have been because of Jehovah's, uh, some higher purpose that Jehovah has in mind, the reason why he's mm -hmm. left someone to die. So that's the official reasoning that's been given. Does that satisfy you? No, definitely not. And this story is concluded that this guy finally was broken down. He was, he was down for some time. Now it's better. However, he regrets all those events, uh, his attitude. But personally, I think in such a complex situation, even if he had another mindset, that wouldn't help against a few strongly doctrined people. In the family. I, I, I'm just trying to understand fully what happened. The, did the person who approached you, was that the person who declined the blood transfusion? Uh, that was his father. So, his, his, it, so it was his father who declined the blood transfusion? Yes. yes. And did his father die? Yes. And uh, during that time, whole family were supporting him. And now that guy thinks in a different way. And that's why he described this story. It must be very... Does he feel as though he played a part in his father's death? I think so. Why? You mean if he feels that he is partially guilt for that? Yes, I think so. And this is uh, heart moving, that story. He feels that he is angry with that, that he himself decided also to support him in this insane decision. But does he not also understand that the decision he made or the support that he gave for refusing the blood transfusion was part of conditioning from an outside source? Yes, yes, definitely. That, that role was replayed, like programmed robot. Do you think that the Polish government should do more to stop people needlessly dying by refusing medical treatment? Yes. What would you like to see them do? First of all, uh, to encourage, to get information from ex-witnesses. Of course, I know that the government and uh, doctors know how to treat people, how to cure them. 
But also from the other hand, we have active Jehovah's Witnesses who try to influence, uh, to have an influence on them not to do so. And there is a fight of the information, let's say. I think also the important thing for Polish government and uh, those who are responsible for that topic would be to make some meetings with ex-witnesses who discovered terrible results of such stories. One uh, big problem with the blood policy is that you have teams of uh, elders, hospital liaison committees, going into hospitals when a patient is in a very vulnerable situation with the sole intent of reminding them of their duty to refuse blood. Do you think that hospitals should be allowing teams of elders to do this? I think they shouldn't allow them to do so. Uh, even uh, in one of Medium I met the uh, phrase Black Angels. This is how they are called by the medicine staff, the hospital. Oh, they call them Black Angels? Yes. Wow. And also that uh, reminded me uh, one more point from the story I've got received in the email that uh, very soon after trying to get contact with those brothers, it turned out that this is a joke. This is a joke because their role is only to check if the hospital doesn't possess, doesn't have the blood that group of that blood which could be injected. If it is guarantee, they are free. That's their only task. They were not interested in the condition of this patient for these few days he spent in the hospital dying. Mm. That's a joke. The only duty and responsibility for them is to watch out if you being on the hospital but uh, will not accept that. If you sign up or express it in some other way, job done, they can leave. I'd like you to speak to the camera there and I'd like you to give a message in Polish to any Jehovah's Witnesses who might be watching this video. Okay, yeah. I'm doing so. Yeah. <laughs> Witam was teraz po polsku. No i tutaj chciałbym skierować do was e, na prośbę Lloyda e, kilka słów. Otóż chciałbym Was zachęcić do tego, żebyście nie bali się, znowu użyję tego zwrotu, wyjrzeć poza regał z literaturą, żebyście oglądali materiały, które są publikowane na YouTubie, żebyście czytali forum Świadkowie Jehowy w Polsce. I raz jeszcze chciałbym podkreślić to, jeżeli jesteś Świadkiem Jehowy i odcięto Cię od rodziny, zabroniono Ci wnikać w to dlaczego, zignoruj to. To jest Twoja rodzina i chcę, żebyś w tej chwili wziął telefon, zadzwonił albo napisał zupełnie inaczej niż pokazano kilka lat temu na zgromadzeniu. Żebyś to Ty zadzwonił lub napisał do tych, których zostawiłeś, których kazano Ci zostawić. Nawiąż kontakt, odbuduj relacje. To jest Twoja rodzina. Żaden starszy w Polsce, żaden starszy w komitecie oddziału i nikt z ciała kierowniczego nie weźmie odpowiedzialności za to, co mówi. Oni się wymigają mówiąc, że my nic takiego nie sugerowaliśmy. To jest tak inscenizowane. Ja chcę, żebyś Ty wziął odpowiedzialność za to, że dałeś się zmanipulować. W tym momencie odzyskaj swoją rodzinę, śledź materiały spoza regału i nie poddawaj się kształtowaniu i programowaniu tej amerykańskiej doktryny. American doctrine. That's what it's yes. about. <laughs> Gosh. Um, I agree, I agree. And uh, could you also talk to the camera. Um, the camera is the governing body. Okay. In English? In English, yeah. Okay. They don't speak Polish as far as I'm aware. But Maybe. they have translators. <laughs> <laughs> In English. Dear governing body, you are not governing body and faithful and slave discreet anymore. This is your fantasy. We don't believe that anymore. And beside that, as to real men, I want to tell you that you are responsible for
for all these painful stories all over the world. All is discovered in one of, in one of your ex-members, Raymond Franz. All this background of making decisions, stupid decisions, stupid strategy planned for many years, for many millions of people, this is, this is terrible and as human you should take the responsibility. I know that you are not brave enough and you won't do so. Maybe one day the government, the real government here on the earth will do correct expected move against your policy. And as uh, somebody has expressed that during the conversation on YouTube, you will be in the prison. I wish you to be in. Excellent. And um, if there's anything else that you wanted to add that you, you would like to have said during our conversation, is there anything that you want to add? I only want to say that I'm very happy to be here with you, that I could arrange my family and uh, job uh, duties uh, to be here, to spend some time together, talk about these important things. And uh, I'm very interested in uh, what will be the next direction, what uh, will be next actions of those who are waking up. I'm waiting for their different kind of activities. I support them and I invite contact. Some of them did so, already did so. And soon we plan to have some interviews. Guys, go on. Do you think the Polish exodus is over or is it beginning? That's the beginning. In my opinion, that's the beginning.